once a system is non-dimensional, uh, the parameters that are left are now the minimal number of parameters that we could have. And we want to probe the effects of varying those parameters on the system. And so uh, we've seen some scenarios of what happens with parametric variation. And the most common one is, let's say, I have x and um, my, uh, let's see, let's say x dot equals f of x equals f1 of x minus f2 of x. Um, and so maybe here's f1 of x um, and here's f2 of x. And there's a parameter that's shifting f2 in this direction. Um, so we can think about what happens as we change that parameter. Uh, so we'll make a bifurcation diagram. I'm going to call the parameter h, and it's just going to shift this that line upward. And then um, we have some fixed points. And so initially, uh, at, let's say this is the h equals 0 line. At h equals 0, we have no fixed points. But uh, let's say we shift the line up. Uh, OK, maybe there's h equals 1. Maybe there's h equals 2. At h equals 2, we a tangency has developed. And so we're going to have the birth of a fixed point. So 1, 2, OK. Um, that fixed point is happening at some relatively large positive x. So there's, there's the birth. Um, and as h continues to increase, uh, okay, our intersection is now happening up here, and we uh, we have two fixed points. Um, I have to think a little bit to figure out their stability. So what's the stability? We were doing f1 minus f2. This is f1. This is f2. So f1 minus f2 is positive here. So that generates uh, an arrow in this direction. Um, and that means uh, this one will be stable and this one will be unstable. OK, and so the lower fixed point is stable and the upper is unstable. And um, I've drawn this parabolic picture. When we're pretty close to this initial intersection, uh, we have this tangency, and then we have this intersection, and it looks quadratic. So, so long as we're close to where this initial intersection happens, uh, this picture should look pretty quadratic. And then as we go further away from the actual bifurcation point, uh, something else may happen. Uh, I didn't draw enough of the function for us to know what happens as we go further away. But anyway, the local picture is that we have what we call a saddle node bifurcation, and we have the birth of a stable and an unstable fixed point. And actually, I'm going to add some flow lines to this picture. So um, when h is small, when h is low and there's no fixed point yet, um, solutions just go flying out to infinity. And then, uh, after, as h increases and we go through this saddle node bifurcation, uh, there's a stable fixed point, and so there's a basin of attraction for that stable fixed point, and everything within that basin lands at the stable fixed point. Everything else still goes out to infinity. Um, and as uh, h increases, uh, the basin gets a little bigger, um, but there are still some states uh, that are heading out to infinity. Okay, so that's... Uh, the basic generic picture, and it happens all the time when one curve is shifting and the other curve has this kind of bend in it, this kind of uh, curvature. Okay, so the basic bifurcation picture for the saddle node, H, uh, X, um, stable, unstable. Uh, that's the basic picture. There's a stable branch, there's an unstable branch, uh, they sit on a parabola. And now uh, I want to talk about the possible case of bistability. So bistability would come up when there are what we call alternate stable states. And that's a little bit of a different bifurcation picture. 
It looks like this. Okay, we still have our saddle node, and now we have a second saddle node. What happens as we increase our parameter? If we start at a value of the parameter that's down here, uh, there's an attracting stable fixed point, and it's attracting and stable for uh, all values of x. And then as our parameter increases, uh, there, um, there are two stable fixed points at some point. So that looks like this. Uh, and as the parameter increases, uh, here are how things look. So um, each of these stable points has a basin of attraction. There are some initial conditions that will be attracted to this fixed point. There are other initial conditions that will be attracted to this fixed point. Um, as our parameter increases, the basin for one of them becomes larger, while the basin for the other is a bit smaller. And at some point, we go through the second saddle node bifurcation, uh, and this lower stable fixed point disappears, uh, at which point there's only one stable fixed point in the system again, and so everything needs to land there. And so these are alternate stable states because there's a period of time where both stable states exist, and the one that you land in depends upon the initial conditions of your problem. At the same time, there's a period of time where there's only one state, and it's the upper state, and there's a period where there's only one state, and it's the lower state. So uh, let's say we start at time zero at a value of the parameter that's all the way down here. Um, and so there's only one stable state, and so we're attracted to it. And then let's say someone starts dialing the parameter. This, um, this curve might be, say, the amount of ice in the Arctic, and the parameter might be the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, and here we are in a pretty icy state. Okay, and so uh, we've converged basically to the stable point, and then the parameter starts changing, and as the parameter starts changing, we basically keep following this stable point. Let's say we're going in little stair steps. Um, we're dialing the parameter, dialing the parameter, and we're taking it in these discrete jumps. Okay, uh, uh, for a long time we were just kind of following this stable state, and that's because this initial condition was pretty close to it. So we were always in the basin attract of attraction of this single state. But once we get over here, the saddle node bifurcation happens, and this state no longer exists. And so let's say that corresponds to all of our ice melting. So we jump up here, and um, our ice is gone. And maybe someone keeps dialing the parameter this way. Okay, uh, there's like this huge jump in the behavior of the system between steadily tracing this fixed point and then transitioning to this other stable state. So even though the underlying bifurcation curve is nice and smooth, uh, the behavior of a solution to this system could have a jump in it. Um, and now let's say that someone comes up with a technology that's able to dial uh, the parameter backwards. So we're over here and we're dialing backwards. So we're again following, uh, we're hanging out right on this stable curve. We're dialing, dialing, dialing. Okay, and oh, we've just passed through, There's there was a saddle node over here, so this stable state that we were following along with as our parameter changed has just disappeared. And so um, we're going to go flying off to that other state, uh, that uh, more icy state, and then we continue to change the parameter and we just continue to travel along that state. Uh, so what happened here, we dialed the parameter upwards, uh, we tracked this stable state until it didn't exist anymore, and we went flying to the other one. And then we dialed the parameter downwards, we tracked this stable state until it didn't exist anymore, and we went flying down to the other one. This is creating a hysteresis loop. If, uh, if we hadn't made the jump, if we had just sat on a single stable state while we were dialing our parameter back and forth, uh, okay, so we dialed it forward, and now we're dialing it backward. Um, 
uh, if we'd stayed on this single stable state as we dialed the parameter back and forth, then uh, when we were at this uh, value of h, we would always be in approximately the same state. However, uh, in this particular bistable picture, um, our history mattered. If we had started down here when you dialed h to zero, then we would be in the lower state. But if we had started up here, and then you dialed h to zero, we would be in the upper state. And so, so there's a dependence on the history of the process for us to predict which state it's going to be in just given a parameter value h. Like, you can't just give me h and I say, oh, this is the x value. No, there are two potential x values for some range of h, and so I need to know some history of the system. Okay, and so that, that is the essence of bistability.